Have you ever, ever had any questions regarding uh, the peace of God, how to have them receive the mind of Christ and, and, and live in peace? Today, we're going to be answering those questions as well as this is Ministry Friday. Man, this is going to be a great time of freedom and liberty, and God's going to speak to people and set their hearts free. Tune in, and you'll be blessed. Welcome to Wisdom for Living with Greg Moore. Join with Greg as he shares truth from the Word of God that will help you grow in wisdom and successfully navigate a balanced life with family, marriage, finances, and relationships. And now, here's Greg. Well, welcome to today's broadcast of Wisdom for Living. My name is Greg Moore. You know, we're right in the middle of a series uh, called A Prosperous Soul and the Trust That Your Soul Has Already Been Ministered To and Prospered. And we're going to answer questions today that I've received uh, on a live Bible study that was taught uh, some time ago that, that relates to uh, problems and challenges in our mind and our soul and our emotions. Um, but then this is also Ministry Friday. And on Ministry Fridays, we have opportunity to uh, let the Spirit of God move. You know, it's the, uh, the, the Word of God and the Spirit of God that really help us through in our lives. And there's a balance of the Word and the Spirit. The Spirit of God hovered over the earth and then the Word, then the word of God spoke with His Word and, and He brought uh, the earth into existence. And, and it's the Word and the Spirit working together in your life that will bring change, that will bring transformation, that will, that will bring revelation and impartation of things. And so, you know, I just believe there's going to be divine encounters with the Lord today in your life. I believe, there, I believe there's going to be a personal ministry to you. That's my heart, is that we would have these, this uh, broadcast wisdom for living would, would really make a difference in your life. It would cause there, uh, there to be just a growing family connection uh, in, in, the, in these broadcasts. I'd, I'd love to connect with you. And so maybe put, uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, put, let God put on your heart someone to reach out to, to tune into the broadcast. We're going to answer questions and then we're going to let the Spirit of God move. So uh, I'm going to tell you funny first. This is uh, called The Dumb Politician. So a congressional candidate in a, in the, a district in East Texas is running on the platform of banning all guns in America. He's considered by those who have dealt with him as a bit more than just a self-righteous and condescending individual. And at a recent rural elementary school in the backwoods of East Texas, he asked the audience for total quiet. Then in the silence, he started to slowly clap his hands once every few seconds, holding the audience in total silence. Then he spoke into the microphone, children, every time I clap my hands together, a child in America dies from gun violence. Then from the back of the room, little Richard Earl, a farm boy with a proud East Texas drawl, pierced the quiet and said, well, stop clapping then, dummy. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> if a little child dies every time you clap, you won't stop that clapping. Hallelujah. Okay. So um, here's a question that was sent in on a live Bible study uh, regarding emotions, which you know ties into our our uh, broadcast on on prosperous soul. It, it says, "How do I?" Uh, this is Hannah Jean. How do I harness my emotions when I realize that I've been tolerating lies and am still overwhelmed? How do I still myself and quiet myself? And get it and, and enter into God's peace. It's a good question, Hannah. Thanks for the uh, question. First, for the first thing that will help you um, is to is to identify the lies that you've been tolerating, and then you you want to replace those lies with the truth. Uh, if 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 you're having a hard time harnessing your emotions because you've believed lies, you, it's not just enough to 
to uh, rebuke the lie. It's not just enough to say, you know, I, I command that to leave my thought pattern and all that. You've got to replace it with the truth. Um, you, you, I encourage you to find scripture verses that, that counteract the lies that, that you've been tolerating. And then I encourage you every time that lie comes up in your mind uh, to counteract it with the truth. That's what Jesus did when the enemy came to him with a half of a verse of scripture. He said, it's, Jesus said, it's written, it's written, and it's written again. So that's the thing that'll run the, the, run the devil off in your life is, to, is you to be equipped with the, the scripture that says, you know, Whatever, whatever, whatever verse of scripture that you need. In fact, I've got a, a book of 41 categories of scripture that would help you. Uh, it's called Scriptures to Live By. And I uh, uh, encourage you to go on my website, gregmore.com, and get that. It'll, it'll help you. Uh, but you, can, you don't need that. You, don't, you can just study it out in the Word yourself. But, but if you'd like to uh, get that, just check it out on my website. And then... You know, you, you, run, you run the devil and his lies off uh, from, from your thought pattern with, with, with the opposite um, of, of what you've been believing, those lies you've been tolerating. And then and in Philippians 4, 6 through 8, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just and, and pure and whatever things are lovely and are of good report, if there's any virtue and any praise, meditate on these things. So these are, these are all things you can just check out in your heart, whether uh, in your mind, are the thoughts that you've been tolerating, do they do they line up with, with, with these things? And if they don't, you cast them down. And then start giving God thanks. He said, when you make re your request, you just start thanking God. And then Isaiah 26, 3 said, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. You need to understand that the grace and the peace uh, that God has, it goes together. Uh, 17 times in the New Testament, it says grace and peace, grace and peace, grace and peace. And that means grace and peace go together. The other thing it means, Hannah, is that when, when you leave peace, you've left grace. And so that's not a condemnation. It's just, it just will help you whenever, the, whenever you've left peace in your mind, um, you, you need, you've left God's grace. You need to go back and start thinking on other things and, and, and the, this scripture here uh, tell, will help you with that. And, and, and look, you know, God, God's got peace for you. He's got grace for you and, and, and he loves you. He's going to help you with this. So uh, Olive uh, asked this question, where do I start uh, dealing with my thought life and my emotions um, after years of letting my emotions run wild? How do I even start? I feel totally out of control. Well, I, I appreciate all of you being transparent. I mean, you know, that's, that's, the, that's a great starting place. Um, you know, when a person comes to Jesus with a lifelong problem and a history, you know, living in their own strength, and they call on the name of the Lord and appeal, you appeal to the, to the Lordship of Jesus, first of all, your past is, is wiped out. And all things are brand new in your spirit, man. So, you know, you, you don't have a problem in your spirit. The real issue is, is you need to align your mind, your will and emotions with what, with what God has done in your spirit. Um, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 tells us that, that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things passed away, all things become new, but it didn't happen uh, all automatically in your mind. And so, um, you know, you, you, come to, you come to Jesus as we've already taught uh, in, in uh, one of the previous broadcasts. As Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30, Come to me, all you who are labor and heavy burden, 
And uh, man, I'll give you rest. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. You come to Jesus. And then, you know, Jesus will show you as you're spending time with him and in his word, where if there's been a stronghold built up in your soul through lies that you've believed about, about the Lord or about yourself or about others, uh, when you come to Jesus, you know, he'll bring you rest. You take his yoke upon you and his burden, and you're letting your emotions control, control your, your life uh, because you haven't surrendered all of your cares over on the Lord. You know, I can't, I can't cast your cares over on God for you. I can't eat for you, drink for you, uh, go to the bathroom for you, or trust God for you. you. You have to do this. You have to go to God and then cast your cares over on Him. And Lord, show me my heart the way you see me. And God will begin to show you the, those lies you believe. And as I shared with Hannah Jean, that you, you have to substitute the lie uh, with the truth. And as you do that, I speak uh, peace and grace to you and everyone that's dealing with, with, a, with a similar thing. Stop, stop living a life trying to carry the burdens that, that Jesus didn't, didn't uh, give to you. So Joe asked the, the following question, how can I have the mind of Christ when I have such difficulty emotionally? Well, Joe, you have the mind of Christ uh, whether you feel like it or not. First Corinthians 2.16, uh, he's been made unto you wisdom. Uh, you know, this, this takes place in your spirit, man. And after you're born again, you, you've also, once you, once you are filled with the spirit, man, you've got rivers of living water that'll flow out of you. You also have the fruit of the spirit, which includes patience and self-control that your spirit man has. So you don't have two natures in, in, in you, Joe. You've, you have only ever had one nature. You don't have a good dog and a bad dog on the inside of you. Uh, the cross ran over the bad dog. And so, you know, what you have to do is have the choice, uh, make the choice to yield your, your, uh, your mind and your will and emotions and your body to the Lord and just say, Father, uh, I, I surrender to you. Become a living sacrifice, Romans 12, 1 and 2 says. Become a living sacrifice. And, you know, when, whenever feelings come and emotions come, you know, they come to all of us. But you don't, have to, you don't have to give authority to those emotions. You don't have to yield to those emotions. You don't have to give your, your emotions a vote in your, in your decision. Uh, man, you, you have to just make, make the decision. I'm not going to act on that right now because that's not who I am. You, you have to know yourself after the Spirit instead of knowing yourself after your failures, your mistakes, your flaws. And then you need to forgive yourself, Joe. And, who, and those, that are, those that are watching, you, you need to forgive yourself for past mistakes. You need to forgive yourself for, you know, believing those lies and and uh, and yielding to those emotions. And we all have emotions, you know, feelings, nothing more than feelings. But we don't have to give authority to those feelings. Um, if you have children, you know, young children, you know, if you give them the vote about where they're going to go eat, they're going to go go to fast food somewhere, and where or that where they have a playground or a happy meal or something like that. Well, you know, maybe that's not what's best for them. You, maybe you need to make the decision yourself. And so you make the decision against the feeling and then don't agree with the feeling when it comes back. You, you, you exalt the word over that. So thanks for these questions, guys. And, and uh, man, if you've got questions, you can email me at info at gregmore.com and also share your testimonies with us. Well, this is um, Ministry Friday, so we're going to allow the Spirit of God to move today. And I believe God has got freedom for you today. I believe in praying about this broadcast, I, I believe uh, the Lord has spoken to me that He's got freedom for you today. Freedom from strongholds, uh, freedom from uh, long-standing problems that are habitual and chronic in your life. 
I believe God's going to set you free today in Jesus' name. So, Father, we just spend time worshiping you. We just love you. We tell you, you are our God. And, Father, we, we set aside problems in our minds, distractions right now, thoughts of uh, condemnation. That's not from you, Lord. Thoughts of discouragement, th those aren't from you, Father. We set those aside. You said when we enter your closet, our closet, you said to shut our door. And we're shutting the door right now on condemnation and guilt. We shut the door on discouragement. We shut the door on um, accusations of the enemy. We shut the door on, on fear and pride and bitterness and, and offense. We shut the door on things that don't belong in our soul. And we, and we cast it down right now, Father, and we focus on you. Right now, would you just worship God with me? Would you just focus on the Lord for a moment? Father, we set our minds on you, and, and, and we, we thank you for the freedom that you've bought and paid for. Hallelujah, that we experience that freedom today. You said there's freedom in the house today, Father. There's freedom in this broadcast right now. There's freedom and you, the presence of God is in your room right now where you are. The presence of God is ministering to you right now, is ministering freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And the Spirit of the Lord is here right now, canceling out that addiction that has caused you so much problem. We break that off of you in Jesus' name. Uh, there's all kinds of addictions, all kinds of uh, chronic problems and habits that the enemy has uh, tempted you with that you've fallen for over and over again. And, and we cancel that out in the name of Jesus. If you can be free from sickness and disease and pain chronically, you can be free from that addiction. Go free now, my brother. Go free in Jesus' name. Choose to forgive yourself right now. Jesus has already forgiven you. Part of the reason why you're, you're, you're stumbling over and over again after you've been born again and filled with the Spirit is because you've held yourself in, in prison when the prison door is open. Forgive yourself, sir. Forgive yourself, ma'am, right now in Jesus' name. Go free from that prison of unforgiveness. That's kept you in bondage. That's kept... That's given the enemy a hook in your jaw. He can pull that anytime he wants to. God has already forgiven you. Who are you not to forgive you? The real problem is, is idolatry. You're, you're exalting your feeling about you don't deserve forgiveness. You know, you've forgiven other people. You don't have problem there, but you haven't forgiven yourself. Right now, I release you from that prison of un, a cell of unforgiveness. In Jesus' name, go free, walk out today, see yourself forgiven, and start lifting your hands and rejoicing that forgiveness is yours. Man, the problem is that you've, you've chosen to value what you've done and, 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 you, and what you think you deserve greater than what Jesus did for you. And the cross is greater than what you've done. Man, you need to release yourself. You need to walk out of that prison cell right now. That thing, that's, that's a hard place to be. And, and the, cell, the cell door is open. <laughs> the prison door is open. Man, walk out, walk free from that. That's not who you are. That addiction that's kept you bound, that's not really the problem. That, that, that addiction is just something you, you, you've used to medicate your pain because you haven't forgiven yourself. That, that pain because of hurt or rejection. You need to choose to forgive yourself right now. Man, I know I'm speaking to someone. Yeah, but, but it's so hard to forgive myself. No, you're, what you're doing is you're comparing your ability with God's. And we're to forgive. In, in Ephesians chapter 4, we're to forgive uh, and in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, we're to forgive even as God in, in Christ forgave us. That's how we're supposed to forgive. Man, 
Uh, we, we, he, we, we forgive because Jesus has forgiven us. We can forgive ourselves. You can forgive yourself right now. And you say, well, that's so, it's so hard. No, you, you're just, you're just uh, you comparing your experience and, and your feelings and your emotions. And I'm telling you, that's an, all of that, all of that is not greater than the cross. It's not greater than what Jesus has done for you. And I'm telling you, you're going to have peace and you're going to have joy. Forgiveness is released to you right now, my brother, in the name of Jesus. Forgiveness is released to you right now, my sister. Choose to forgive yourself. Let it go. Praise God. And walk free. And you're going to find out that that addiction doesn't have a hold on you. What, what had the hold on you is your, your own unforgiveness of yourself. And Jesus has already paid the price. Go free today. And then there's someone I'm, I'm speaking to. You've, been, you've had a hard time forgiving others because what someone did to you was very painful, uh, very harmful to your, uh, to your family, to your, to your life, and you, you need to let them go. It's, it was difficult on you financially. Someone's taken advantage of you financially. And I'm telling you, you need to, you need to let it go. Uh, you need to choose. The reason, the reason we have a hard time forgiving others is because we've chosen to value our pain and our loss greater than the cross. We're valuing what people did to us greater than what Jesus has done for us. And it doesn't matter what someone has done to you. Uh, they haven't hung you up on a cross as an innocent human being yet, as they did Jesus. Man, uh, Jesus said while he was hanging on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. And you say, yeah, they knew what they were doing. Well, no, not really, not spiritually. They didn't know. Forgive them, let them go. And then someone that is watching Someone's taken advantage of you big time financially. Uh, you lost a lot of money. And I've got a verse for you, First Chronicles. Um, I think it's First Chronicles. It's either First or Second Chronicles. Um, 25, it's Second Chronicles. Uh, 25 and verse 9. It's a story of King Amaziah, who was a king of Judah. And he hired the children of Israel to help him against his enemy. And the children of Israel were not serving God. And a man of God, in verse 7, came to King Amaziah and said, O king, do not let the army of Israel go with you, for the Lord is not with Israel, nor with any of the children of Ephraim. But if you go, be gone, be strong in battle. Even so, God shall make you fall before the enemy. For God has power to help and to overthrow. Then Amaziah said to the man of God, But what shall we do about the hundred talents of silver that I've given to the troops of Israel? What, what shall I do about the money that's lost? And, and this is the word for someone who's lost a lot of money. Someone's taken advantage of you financially. And the man of God answered and said, The Lord is able to give you much more than this. Listen, listen, listen. I know. <laughs> personally, because I've lost a lot of money before. And, and I've taken that. And, you know, in one case, it was a, a guy that ended up, ended up marrying my cousin, and I just made a decision, you know, I'm going to release that. I'm going to take that money instead, instead of, you know, having a problem at, at, at our family gatherings, I'm just going to take that money that, was, that was, uh, I was taking advantage of, and I'm going to plant it as a seed. I'm going to give it. Now I'm in control of it. And then I release that person from the debt that they owe me. I've had people, I've had people that owed me thousands of dollars and then they wouldn't talk to me. They would avoid me. And I just pick up the phone and call them. And I, 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 because I know this, what shall we do about the money that we've given? And I know right here in this verse, Second Chronicles 25, 9, the Lord is able to give you much more than this. And you know what I've done? I've called them. I said, listen, I just want to call you today and let you know, you don't owe me any money. I give that money to you. Oh, no, 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 I'll, I'll pay it back. No, I said, you can't pay me back because I've given it to you today. I give that to you today. And I'm telling you, it just, 
It just, it, you know, of course it freaks them out, but, <laughs> and, but then it frees me. And, and because now I'm in control of it and that money now will go into my future because I've sown it into their lives. You say, yeah, I don't want to give to that bad person or whatever. No, just give it, man. Just give it. Just release it. Forgive them and let it go. Watch Frozen <laughs> with your children or grandchildren. Let it go. Let it go. And what, what's going to happen? You know, the, the whole context of this series about a prosperous soul, it'll bring you into peace. It'll cause you to have so much joy. It'll cause you to have so much peace and it'll bring you freedom. I speak freedom to you today in Jesus' name from unforgiveness toward yourself, from unforgiveness toward others. It's not worth it. Life is too short. Uh, it, it, the unfor to, to hold unforgiveness and it'll create bitterness. It'll, it'll stop the life of God from flowing to you. It'll stop the healing virtue from your spirit uh, through your soul to your body because the gates and doors of your soul are closed through unforgiveness or bitterness. Guys, let it go. I free you today in the name of Jesus. Let it go. Let that person go. Give that to them. Plant it as a seed and you watch and see how God will restore that relationship, how God will give you peace and how the Lord will cause you to be able. He'll, the Lord will give you much more than this. Hallelujah. I've never, I've never regretted releasing that and releasing forgiveness. So I just bless you today. Man, thank God for tuning in to Wisdom for Living. And I, I, I encourage you to go to gregmore.com and send me your testimony about how this has helped free you today. God bless you. Discover the key to a life of health and prosperity when you read Greg's book, A Prosperous Soul. In this book, you will learn biblical truths that will help bring freedom to your life. Get your copy of Greg's new book by going to gregmore.com today. Today's teaching, A Prosperous Soul, is also available in a five-part CD or DVD album or on a USB flash drive containing both audio and video. Go to gregmore.com and order your copy today. On today's broadcast, I mentioned uh, my book, Scriptures to Live By. It's got 41 categories of scripture. It's just a great uh, resource. Uh, of counseling and, and just a Bible study. I encourage you to uh, get a copy of that. Go to gregmore.com, pick up a copy of that. I know you'll be blessed. And then, man, it would be great if you could send me your testimonies. Just uh, go to gregmore.com and then email us your testimony about how the Lord's freed you from unforgiveness. In his book, Scriptures to Live By, Greg has compiled an arsenal of scriptures in 41 essential categories. Order your copy at gregmore.com today. Remember, you can order resources or partner with our ministry at gregmore.com or by writing to us at P.O. Box 7702, Woodland Park, Colorado, 80863. We look forward to hearing from you today.